Hey guys, I'm Kyle with Rhino. This video is a hardware overview of Arc 2. So what are all the nifty features on it? What are the ports? What do they do? What are the buttons? How do you turn it on? All about that. We're not gonna be talking about sliders. You can watch other videos about those. All right, let's jump into it. Let's talk about the UI for a second. To turn Arc 2 on, you press and hold the power button for three seconds. You'll see a little Rhino splash screen and then you'll be greeted with the main menu. To navigate through the menus, you're going to use the joystick where I can move left and right. It's the little bubbles at the bottom let you know that there's more menu items to explore and you click in to those with the joystick. Now to back out, I'm gonna use the power button, press it once and I can move back in the menu. That's the basic menu flow throughout the entire ecosystem of Arc 2 when you're using the hardware. You also have an iOS app out that controls it even easier using your iPhone. You might notice that there are two joysticks on the unit and the main joystick that is facing you is used for both menu navigation and for keyframing your pan tilt axes. The front joystick is used for keyframing slider and focus. I'll show you how to do that real quick right now. So let's click into video mode. It says set keyframe one. So I can use my joystick to both control pan and tilt on the unit. And let's say that I want my first keyframe to be on the right side of the unit. I'm gonna pull the joystick towards the right side to move the slider that direction. Now I've had a camera set up on here. I don't so that you can see the whole unit, but I can also keyframe my focus if I move up and down on the joystick. You can see the focus wheel moving. Rhino Focus is an optional accessory that does not come with the base model of Arc 2, but if you do choose to buy it, you install it by releasing this lever, and this is how you add or remove focus and also change the positioning of it relative to your lens. Let's move over to the 501 plate that is included. You might wonder, how do I get this out? Well, there's a lever on the side of the unit that releases it, and also a button. So, obviously you don't want your camera to slide forward. There's two hard stops built into this, a forward hard stop and a rear hard stop. To release that, you need to push this button in on the side, release the plate, and now you can mount it to your camera. One cool feature of Arc 2 is that it actually has a mounting tool built into it. And this mounting tool allows you to mount your plate directly to your camera. You don't have to fumble around for coins or keys anymore. Also has a bottle opener built into it, which I'm fond of when I'm doing time lapses. I'm just gotta kill the time. Let's put that plate back in and lock this down. Next up, let's talk about ports. I have my 6D on here with my time-lapsing lens, focus is set up. How do we set this up if we're doing it from scratch? So if you look on the far left is the shutter release port. Let's plug that in before we do anything else. All right, that's good to go. The next cable to install is your slider motor cable. And this goes from the front of the unit. So we plug that in, that locks our shutter release cable in. You wanna make sure that you put the shutter release cable first, because if you do your motor first, you won't have access to the shutter port. Next up is our focus cable, and that's just to the right of your linear motor cable. Just to the right of the focus cable, there is a port for a 12 volt charger. And we include a 48 watt, 12 volt and DC charger. You wanna use this to charge up Arc 2. You can also use other power sources to power Arc 2 while it's in use if you're doing an extended time lapse. Let's go ahead and plug this in so you can see what it looks like. Now, the last port is what we call Rhino Power. And we built in really big batteries into Arc 2 because I personally hate charging my devices. And what we realized is that we could actually power other devices from the batteries within Arc 2. And so when I'm doing extended interviews or time lapses, I just I hate changing batteries. It's a pain point for me. And so you can buy an optional dummy battery. I'll show you how this works. Places your normal battery. Let's set it back up. 
after you have your dummy battery put into your camera you want to power arc 2 on first after it's up and running then you can plug in the rhino power adapter and it will turn on your camera and power it the great thing about this is you only need to worry about charging one thing which is arc 2 with the included power adapter and then you don't have to worry about charging your camera for long shoots like time lapses or interviews when you have this fully populated it's a lot of cables going on and we've tried our best to manage all those cables with the directions that they're pointing the front cable points directly out so it doesn't get caught in the rollers you have your shutter release cable your focus cable you have your rhino power adapter which is a longer cable so that you can power a monitor if you want to instead of your camera. And then you have your power adapter. Now one thing to note is to make sure I would put this directly behind my system off, not off to the side. If you put it off to the side and your slider moves to one direction, it could pull it out. And I mean, it's not gonna cancel your move or anything, but you're not gonna have the external juice that you want. So just a little point of precaution there. Hopefully this video was helpful on all the ports and a hardware overview of Arc 2. If you have other questions, if you want to learn how to set up a move, please watch our other videos or you can email support at rhinocg.com. Thanks for watching.